Hello, welcome to another program of the series, Gabrielle Delan. We'll be talking about another book by Gabrielle Delan, Spiritist Phenomenon. And today we have here with us, we have the pleasure of welcoming Flavio Zainetti directly from Boston, United States. Welcome, Flavio. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, everybody. Pleasure, to, pleasure to have you here. And hello to all those watching us. I'll um, quickly introduce uh, Flavio Zanetti for those who don't know him. He um, has always been amazed by the degree of rational comprehension and comforting um, from spiritism and that spiritism brings to humanity. He is an avid spiritist student and a tireless worker for the spiritist movement across the United States. Since 1999, he has worked for the Allen Kardec Spiritist Society of Massachusetts. Between 2008 and 2012, he acted as the program's director for the United States Spiritist Council, helping organizations across the country, both as a lecturer and as a workshop and event coordinator. He also contributes by translating books, articles, and course materials for the Spiritist magazine and various other publications. He holds degrees in engineering and in sociology and has a, a master's degree in international management and business operations. He lives in Boston, United States, with his wife and two beautiful 10-year-old twin daughters. So, Flavio, again, it's a great pleasure to have you here. And... I hand it over to you. Thank you, Munir. Thank you for the warm introduction. Um, welcome, everybody, who is following us either live or through the recorded version later on. Such a great pleasure to be here. Uh, but before we start with our topic, we'd like to um, raise our thoughts to our professor, to our teacher, Jesus. May he, through the you know, benevolent spirits, enlighten our hearts, bring peace to them, and also help us with the degree of comprehension in a way that we put the same amount of effort and same dedication bringing this topic for all of you folks. So it's great to be here. Thank you once again. And uh, spiritus phenomenon, that's the topic that we're going to go over today. That's a topic that Gabriel Delan covered very, very uh, interestingly, in his book with the same title, The uh, Spiritist Phenomenon. But the question is that I want to start with is, what is this Spiritist Phenomenon? Why is it so important? Why is it that Gabriel Delon, the esteemed author and follower of Kardec, why did he dedicate one entire book to go over this phenomenon? Also, what we'd like to do is, spend a few minutes going over Delan's biography to share some interesting facts about his life and some of his accomplishments. And obviously, we'll go into, uh, into details about how the book was formed, how he wrote the book, what's the underlying message about the Spiritist Phenomenon. All right? So this book, The Spiritist Phenomenon, was written in 1896. So... It's over 127 years old that this book was written. Has anything changed with Spiritist Phenomenon? Did we have one phenomenon in the past, one today? Are they still the same phenomenon? Again, those are some of the questions we'll go over as we delve into the topic here, folks, right? So let's just uh, spend a few minutes on the line uh, himself, his life. Interestingly enough, his father, Alexandre Delan was really Alan Kardec's friend. They, you know, were friends. And then when Alan Kardec obviously founded Spiritism, Delan's dad had first-hand experience with this new thing called Spiritism. And even more so, Delan's mother was also an automatic, you know, writing medium. The Kardec also leveraged to publish some of the contents from Spiritism itself, right? He was one of the greatest scientists of the time and also a avid promoter of Spiritism. Every chance he had, every opportunity he laid himself on, 
he was dedicated to really commit into broadcasting, promoting, and really disseminating spiritism, not only in France, but in different parts of Europe back then. He even founded the uh, French newspaper Le Revue Scientifique et Morale de Spiritisme in 1882, or the scientific magazine of the Spiritist Morals, a literal translation. As I mentioned, he traveled through all the continent to really spread the message of Spiritism. We can really say that thanks to Delon, more and more folks were able to grasp or really lay their hands on Spiritism overall. Allow me to remind you folks that back then, the means of communication of the time was were very poor. We did not have social media, no internet, no telephones, right, for the most part. So they had to go in and speak in large plazas, in large you know, squares, and talk to folks. And a lot of the uh, heavy, you know, duty work was done by Delan going out there and talking to people and bringing the message to different parts where spiritism had not been, or had not arrived before that. Alongside with Leon Denis, which, by the way, we've already studied him here in previous opportunities. He actively participated in the very first Spiritist and Spiritualist Congress of 1890, so 133 years ago. He also worked with the uh, esteemed physiologist Charles Richet on metaphysics research. Needless to say, folks, Gabriel Delan was a man of science, he was a man that was inserted into a lot of different parts of society. He was very well respected, not only by his peers, by folks that knew him or that knew about his knowledge, his experience and everything else. And then what happened was he dedicated his life towards really the spread of spiritism. So, that is a little bit of Gabriel Delan for those folks who had not been part of this series before. But then if we flip on the original topic or the spiritist phenomenon, what is it? What can we say this phenomenon is? Is it a different phenomenon back then than it is today? If we have a chance to go to a spiritist center ourselves, ourselves are we going to encounter this phenomenon in every spiritist center? What has changed? What is the phenomenon in by itself? So interestingly enough, in the very beginning of the book, that's what he dedicates it to. This is the uh, dedication when you open up the first pages of this book. He says, and I quote, to the immortal soul of my revered master, Alan Kardec, I dedicate this book, which is the work of one of his most obscure and sincere admirers. So he's putting himself in a, in a place of admiration and a place of humility to the one that really in front of Alan Kardec. So he was really involved in not only bringing the message forward, but driving the idea or this new idea that spiritism was starting to conquer not only Europe, but throughout the world. That's you know the whole dedication on the book. If you look at the book in itself, the book is divided into five parts. He writes an introduction, right? He writes history, and then there's facts, advice to mediums, and then he talks about spiritism in itself. What is it? Is it a religion? Is it a science? Is it a philosophy? He goes over into those things which we'll tackle here in a few minutes or so. All right, so if you look at introduction, uh, like every well-written book, I'm sure you've written, you've, you've read many books. Some of you may even have written some books. Uh, the introduction is the, really the presentation of the work. When we are presenting a new idea, a new thesis, or a new hypothesis, or a new anything, we have to introduce that to the readers, correct? So here's where the author, Gabriel Delan, catches the attention from readers. And at the same time, he starts to propose main topics that will be covered or the main idea behind the book. Obviously, for this one, 
Gabriel Delan is going to show us what is thing what the, what is this thing about the spiritist phenomenon that was still not very well comprehended by most people. They knew about spiritism or new spiritualism, as it was called in the beginning, they, for many, 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 many folks. He, they knew about this idea, this concept, but he goes into details to really explicate what the phenomenon really is. So if you look at right in the uh, introduction, here's what he defines this phenomenon to be. I quote, spiritism is a science whose aim is, to, is the experimental demonstration of the existence of the soul and its immortality through communications with those who have been improperly called dead. So, right here, Gabriel Delan, from the introduction, he already defines, he already gives us, here's the end of the book. Here's what you should be able to arrive at a conclusion yourselves when we talk about the spiritist phenomenon. Here's what the phenomenon really is, which is, in other words, this possibility for discarnate spirits, those that we improperly call them dead, notice the adjective here, we improperly call them dead, those that have already passed, maybe our loved ones, maybe those that have, we have you know, knowledge about, we have relationships with, those that are no longer here with us in this physical realm, the ability for them to talk to us, to communicate with us, to exchange messages. And those spirits, right, are therefore able to do so with us, spirits who are incarnates on earth. So the interesting piece here that I'd like to highlight is that when he describes the phenomenon, I love the way he calls improperly called them. Those spirits that are or have been improperly called dead. Because as we spiritists know, death doesn't exist. He's just corroborating the message that those are loved ones, for example, or anybody for that matter, they have already passed. They departed from the physical bodies, their physical bodies, but they're therefore not dead. This is a huge critique on the idea or the concept of death. That he's able to just tell us right off the, the cuff, right off the bat, from the introduction of the book. Amazing, if you think about it. Amazing the way he is he, able to, to create this definition in simple, small words, one, two, or three line paragraphs, paragraph that can really explicate, that can really explain to us what the phenomena is, why, what is he used for, all right? Remind you again, for those folks that joined us a few minutes late, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, by all means, throw them at us. And if they're relevant to what we're talking here, we'd love to take a look at them and comment on them or answer them, hopefully, uh, uh, on the air as we're going through this. All right? Continuing. So introduction, that's the first part of the book. Then what the land does is really a, he travels through history. He talks and brings us some historical components of what you know, this British phenomenon is. And this is an interesting one because a lot of people, even though Alan Kardec himself first published the word spiritism and also the word mediumship, but did he really invent those things? Was Alan Kardec the inventor of spiritism? Was he the inventor of mediumship? Because if we say he was the inventor of mediumship and spiritism, or the spiritist phenomenon, for that matter, that would mean that those things did not exist before because as you know, a man of science, when you invent something, you discover something, that means, right, from the moment on, you can actually have the repercussions of that invention, so to speak. So Gabriel Delan does a great job explaining to us that even though Ellen Kurdak crafted for the very first time the word spiritism and the word mediumship, those things have been present since the ancient times. Without a doubt, 
those things have been present since the ancient times. So what does it mean to us? What does it mean to us that like spiritism, that follow the spiritist ideas? Does it mean that I can call spiritist somebody else that was even before Kardec? What are some of the examples that we can really talk about where spiritism was present in the old times? So a few that I wanted to highlight that are part of the book, that obviously we cannot cover the entire book within 45, 50 minutes that we have to spend with you folks, correct? So our goal here is to present some of the main ideas and hopefully, and the big hopefully here, that may motivate you to go out there buy the book or, you know, either download it from Amazon or whatever it is, whatever method you like to read, get the book, right, from your spiritist centers and really be able to consume in a way that's more methodolo methodologically and you can really see the examples, the history, the topics, the, the areas where the land goes very, very well into details to talk to us about the spiritist phenomena itself. So the first topic that he makes in the history part of the book is contrary to today, interestingly enough, contrary to today, these practices were the exclusive prerogative of religious leaders, like priests, church folks, and everybody else. They were doing those. They've always done it. But the average or the lay person, the average person had no idea those things were happening. Even today, for the most part, folks that have not had access to spiritism, for example, have no idea that these things are still happening. Even more so from remote times in history, the evocation of spirits was practiced by a certain man that had made it a specialty, or those are the advisors, or those are the ones that right, are able to communicate with the dead, and so forth. In Greece, for example, this belief of evocations was general. The general population knew about it. From left to right, they knew about it. And let me bring you some interesting things about the first revelation, or as we learn through Judaism and also Christianity, in a way that it's written in the book uh, Deuteronomy, where it says, or it calls up for us, asks us, let no one amongst us use sorcery and enchantments, nor question the dead to know the truth. Now, let me ask you this, folks. If the Deuteronomy's book is asking us not to do it, what does it mean? Because it exists, correct? Can we agree that once something's trying to prevent something, is because that something agrees? Or if someone is trying to prohibit or prevent something from happening, it's because that's something it, you know, happens, correct? Let me make it clear. So the Deuteronomy, which is the book of laws from Judaism and Christianity, the First Testament, is prohibiting this communication because by that time, you know, previous to Jesus coming, right, second revelation, by that time, a lot of folks were using that phenomenon or that mechanism to do everything for them, meaning... They were asking the deities or the spirits, same thing back then. Hey, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I get a new job? Should I get married? Should I move over? For all the basic and lame questions, should I eat this? Should I not eat that? Questions that they themselves could have gotten a hand on and answered by themselves or through themselves. But instead, they were looking for the shortcut. They were looking for that quick pill as we call it these days. The very same quick pill that a lot of folks today are still looking for, unfortunately, are still looking for. The quick pill of a losing weight, the quick pill of making money, or the quick pill of you know, progressing your life, quick pill of, let's call it our spirit as well, quick pill of enlightenment, the quick pill. There's no such thing as a quick pill, my friends. There's no such thing as a quick pill. Because if we don't do the work, the work will not get done. We have to do the work, not anybody else for us. That's what we learn through spiritism. So back to the point here. Since the ancient times, these things were happening. 
these channels of communication, so to speak, were happening. One of the more recent examples is Joan of Arc or Joanna d'Arc, right? Depends on how you translate her name. This heroic figure of Joan of Arc shows how a 14-year-old girl, 14-year-old girl, was able to communicate with generals, with higher up army, you know, uh, folks in a way that she was, it was, you know, this I'll call her, or you know, which we could call her this shepherdess, right? Was expelling the foreigner from her own con- country, France, and she was actually guided by spiritual powers, by voices. Do this, do that, or do this, don't do that. Use this technique, not that technique, and so forth. So, if you're interested on that, it's an amazing story, folks. If you're more interested on that, the life and the history of Joan of Arc. I highly recommend this book that was written by Leon Denis, who was, if you remember at the beginning of our presentation, Leon Denis and Delon, they exchanged a lot of activities, a lot of work, and it was translated to English by no one, no, no more, no less than Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes, the same one that wrote the Sherlock Holmes, a great you know, author, esteemed author from the United Kingdom, who was also following this new movement, this new thing called Spiritism. Highly recommended the book. The book's still available in bookstores and everything else. So, interestingly enough that the book was written to catch public's attention, the mystery of Joan of Arc. But for us, Spiritists, there's really is any mystery, is there? What is the mystery? For us, there's no mystery. For us, it's just the Spiritist phenomenon that was taking place of Joan of Arc, communicating with folks and trying to gather some directions, some guidelines, some help in order to defeat England that was really, you know, battling or trying to conquer France by that time. So amazing book, highly recommended, and uh, really showcases the life of Joan of Arc and the fact that when she was put into fire, she was given the option, why are you doing this? You should renounce don't tell anybody you follow Christ because, right, if you say so, and you're even hearing those voices, what are you doing? Right? You, 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 he, she was even given the option by the soldier who was targeted, who had actually tasked to put her on, put herself on fire. And she said, no, nope, I cannot denounce the one that I follow. I follow Christ, and he is the one that I really try to mimic my life against it. So amazing book. Amazing story about this amazing woman that, um, if I can maybe a little spoiler alert, in this book, there's actually some interesting components or there's some interesting evidence of a previous incarnation where Joanna of Arc actually has lived the same time as Jesus. I'm not going to tell you who that one was. I'll let you read the book so you can arrive to the conclusion yourself. Moving on. If we look at, for example... These two beautiful faces from the past. And this is this is where if we were doing this in person, if we were doing this live on the same audience, I would ask you to name those two folks. What who are they? What do they have in common? You may say, well, they have a beard, they're getting a little bold. I get it, right? That's the commonality between the two. But I'll go even beyond that. Those folks were Greek, they were Greeks. The one on the left is Plato. The one on the right is Socrates. And they both commonly talked about reincarnation and human soul. A soul, I may say, that survives our body's death. That's not you, right? This is even before, it's 3,000 years ago. So that knowledge, my friends, it was always there. Socrates, the one on the right, even more so referred to having an invisible friend with him at all times. Okay, we can even say he's Gordon Angel or a spirit guide. However you want to call it, the names don't matter much. The idea is really what matters. He had somebody that he was able to communicate at all times. And again, these are two great examples from not only a mythology that's 
phantasmic or that's uh, that's missed. No, it's their lives. They always called upon that. They always shared that they were able to communicate with folks that have already passed their physical lives. As the line references, uh, those that were that are improperly called dead. Right. So moving on, if we look, for example, at some of the phenomenon in the modern times. These are some of the ones that Delan mentions in the book. The one that it called upon several times is the work that Emanuel Swedenborg does. With in the 18th century, he brings us a huge compendium about heaven and hell, about life in the spirit world, or in this, you know, we call it heaven and so forth. And interestingly enough, if we open the pages of Spirit's book. Emanuel Swedenborg, the Swedish author or the prophet, as he was called before, is also one of the authors that are that have contributed to the Spirit's book and the codification, right? Books by Allan Kardec himself. So these things was they were happening even before Kardec's right uh, codification of Spiritism. That's exactly why we don't say Kardec created Spiritism, but instead he codified. He compiled all these teachings and put them together so that you know you and I could go in and read and make sense. You and I could go in as a methodological, you know, sequence of events. The spirits book, four parts, the mediums book, questions and answers, topics, items, the gospel, which really talks about the gospel, the Jesus time and his teachings and all that. Again, when we look at that, Kardec as an educator was able to put all these things together that are much easily much more easily consumed by you and I now than really going down into that pathway of learning spiritism and getting more familiarity with spiritism. If I flip to the right, I see Andrew Jackson Davis and his illuminating mediumship. He had, a, he had an amazing mediumship that was really bringing a lot of knowledge for the American people. Thanks to his mediumship, even in the White House, there were some senses or spiritist phenomenon, right? Mediumship meetings inside the White House. Whoa, hang on, What's, what, is, what are you talking about, Flavio? Yes, what I'm talking about is back in the mid of 19th century, there were spiritist meetings or mediumship meetings inside the White House, thanks to Andrew Jackson Davis. And obviously everything started in this part of the pond, in this part of the world with Fox sisters and they're listening or they're hearing raps into their houses. Then folks will go in and study the phenomenon, right? From Hydesville, New York. There's also spiritual communications by the Shakers. I'm sure you've heard that. It's very prominent in the UK. It's also prominent here in the Northeast part of the United States. And obviously the turning tables uh, uh, phenomenon that really was the beginning of spiritism as we understand, as we know, through the lens of Kardec as a codifier. But the spiritist phenomenon, this is what the author Delan is trying to tell us here. The spiritist phenomenon is not new. It's been with us for the longest times, right? It's, it's not something that's new. It's been with us since humanity, right, was here on Earth. All right, so how does he do that? What's his method of telling the uh, re reader how to get to the conclusion. Delaney is very methodical when he, he puts his uh, knowledge in the book. And then what does, he, what does he do? He jumps into facts because he introduced the idea, if you remember, right, the concept of the spiritist phenomenon. And if you remember, spiritist phenomenon is that we understand spiritism as a science that is aimed at the experimental demonstration of the existence of our souls and their immortality, as well as the communication for those who are, remember, improperly called dead with ourselves. That's the phenomena that he describes. Then what does he do? He goes into history. This phenomena doesn't only happen in France or in the UK or in America. It happened all over the world. It happened in South America. It happened in Germany, in Italy, in France, in Spain, in Russia, a lot of places. The phenomenon is happening everywhere. So what does he do? He goes in 
and starts compiling these facts that can really make our lives easier in order to arrive at the conclusion he's going to propose to us. Obviously, he was very enlightened when he was planning to write the book because it really gives us a sequence of knowledge or a method that makes our comprehension a lot easier to arrive at the same conclusion. So some of the facts that he brings, and I'll call for the very first one that he talks about in the book, right? From French author Victor Hugo, avoiding this religious phenomenon and not giving the attention it deserves is failing with what the truth deserves. That's what Victor Hugo is telling us. That if we avoid our head, it doesn't exist. Come on, Flavio, that's just baloney, right? That, no, that just, no, that doesn't exist. If we avoid that, we can say it doesn't exist. We can have all, our opinion. Obviously, we're entitled to have an opinion. But if we don't give the attention that it deserves, we're failing with the truth or with what the truth deserves. That's why Victor Hugo talks about. And he was a, a follower too. He was the one that was brought to one of the turning tables experiments, so to speak. And he was convinced that the table wasn't talking, but there was somebody there behind the table, somebody with an intelligence, somebody that knew things that only he knew when he was invited to the uh, turning tables experiment. And then he was able to confirm that. That's why he's the one, he, he was one of those that really attested to the veracity, to the truth that spiritism really bring, brought by that time and still brings to humanity to this date. Now, a little interesting way of um, bringing some facts that Delon, you know, uh, uh, explains in the book. There was something that was formed in England by 1867. That was the London Dialectical Society. And this society was a British professional association, like a union, like an association of you know, professionals. That was formed in 1867, as I said, to encourage debate of all questions, all questions without reserve, but especially those comprised in the domain of ethics, metaphysics, and theology. Because that those were the, the hot topics of the time. So what happened was this association had several folks from the uh, London Society that really had a job to meet up and understand and talk and discuss and debate what some of the topics were there. And there were, you know, illustrious, you know, members of that society. And at one time, they focused a lot on discussing the topic of, guess what? Spiritism or spiritualism, right? Back then. So when we look at that, Delenn explains to us in the book, what, were, what was the method that the society used what were the main benefits of having a society which was eclectic, people from different shapes or different ways of life, right? Authors, scientists, professors, professionals, folks from different parts, right? Different types of knowledge to really bring their best to the investigation and report of claims around mediumship, spiritualism, spiritism, Right? All those things. The phenomenon in and by itself. And the interesting part of this is when we look at the uh, what Delon talks about, they were trying to really go after claims and they found some, some, you know, some mediums that were really not mediums. They were trying to really keep up with the Jonases and fake mediumship. And they were able to debunk some of these mediums with a very comprehensive method, uh, methodology to debunk those folks. But at the same time, what they didn't contribute was for those that were righteous or you know, correct mediums, so to speak, they were able to say, you know what? These guys are the real deal. These folks are, right? We can really attest to those. They wrote reports like the one I'm showing with you here on this, um, on this slide. This report was from 1871, right? Report number 46 on spiritualism of the Committee of the London Dialectical Society. So that was a real deal back then, folks. This was a big thing in London, or all over the world for that matter. Folks was, you know, everybody was talking about it. It was the newest thing, right? 
and that everyone was involved talking, discussing, and trying to learn more about it. And obviously with that, there were some of those right, folks trying to benefit or trying to, uh, to circumvent and make you know, a benefit for themselves. And these guys were the ones responsible to really bring those folks down or really to debunk those individuals. All right? On the opposite side of that, a very prestigious British citizen called, or now called Sir William Crooks, right, says something that's uh, very interesting for us to analyze or to reflect upon. I'm not saying it's possible. I'm saying it's true regarding this spiritist phenomenon. He was saying it was the real deal, right? For those of you who don't know or may know a little bit, Sir William Crooks was a British chemist, a physicist who attended the Royal College of Chemistry. I think now it's, I, I believe now it's part of the uh, Imperial College of London and worked on the uh, spectroscopy. He was a pioneer on vacuum tubes, the same vacuum tubes that were pivotal for technology to really advance in the 19th century. And uh, that discovery eventually changed the whole field of physics and chemistry as we know it. Thanks to him, some of the developments of the modern world are able to be done now because the vacuum tubes and all that. He was also credited uh, with discovering the element thallium in the, chem in the, the chemical board or in the chemical elements. And Crookes really became interested in spiritism when in the late 1860s, uh, he was involved because his brother had passed away and he wanted to know more about what happened and this new thing. And then he thought he was going to debunk the, the idea of you know, the turning tables and all that. But on the contrary, right, after his brother passed away, his brother was only 21 years of age, if I'm not mistaken. After his brother passed away, he started to really go after, you know, study, talk to folks, uh, mediums like Kate Fox, uh, Florence Cook was a very famous medium back then, and Daniel Douglas Hume, who was an amazing Scottish medium that was able to, he was, he was seen with, you know, amazing materializations everywhere that we know. And that same medium is a, I'm not going to tell you who it is now, but it's also his reincarnation now is a famous medium that is still writing books with us to this date. So after his thorough investigation, he really attested that mediums could produce some paranormal, you know, activities or some paranormal, you know, conditions and talk to those that are here, that they were here on Earth. So... Sir William Crooks is the one that also Delon uses to corroborate, to attest the veracity of uh, uh, facts based on this produced phenomenon that was present or is still present here with us today. Moving on, if I look at the next chapter or one of the chapters that Delon uses, he talks about transcendental spiritism. Now, I think the, the question that we should be asking ourselves is what is Transcendental. I mean, what, what does he mean, right? So, transcendental, if you look at the dictionary, for example, it relates to spiritual or non physical realm, meaning that transcends what we can see, touch, you know, smell, sense, that transcends, that goes beyond all those things. So, transcendental spiritism surpasses our normal knowledge that you know a lay person has to this date that's what he meant he means or he meant by leveraging the word transcendental spiritism right and then he dedicates a full chapter to go over or to explain how spiritism transcends our knowledge in time he shows us and lets us witness ourselves some experiences that positively established the real and the, um, the the concrete objective of the existence of spirits do they exist? Why? What's the what's the what's the purpose? Why are we here on Earth? How do we communicate? Why should we communicate? Why can we communicate? All these questions that he goes around by demonstrating to us that in certain circumstances, their presence or the presence of our loved ones can be verified with such rigor. And such you know concreteness that the same processes can commonly be used to really when we're dealing or when we're you know interacting with 
a person that's incarnate, the person that's you know on earth right now. So he talks to us and explains to us. Obviously, it's a very thorough work that he does, right? Mentioning to us, here are some of the ones that he talks to us about in the book, the actions of spirits. How do they act? How do they act on our thoughts? How do they act on becoming visible to us, right? Operations is a great one, right? Transport phenomenon. For example, Daniel, Do Daniel Douglas Hume will we'll go out in one window and come back in a different window. And he studied that, the way that the medium transported himself from one location to another. The apparition, uh, uh, appearances or apparition uh, phenomenon where we can see, for example, a dead one, a dead spirit, or a dead person or a spirit that's no longer here with us, right? We can see that person. Oh my God, this is my grandma that passed away so many years ago. I can see how I can talk to her. He explains to us the details of how luminosity, what's the physics behind these apparitions in the dark? The shapes and figures of ghosts are those that we call ghosts, for example. Talks about materializations after the mediumship, meaning after the phenomenon, right? He really understands what, what those things are. We understand that. He even talks about clairvoyance, the ability to see a right, mediumship that we can see beyond other people's lives and things and who are around, spirits that are around us. He even talks about clairaudience mediumship, that one that we can hear spirits talking to us, giving us the, the advice, like Joanna of Arc, for example. He even talks or brings some Aksakov experiences and observations. A mother, one of the Russian scientists that was really heavily involved with spiritism back in the days. And then he brings in even some experiences in Italy, America, England, and a few other places. He even goes into touching a little bit on the psychiatry and spiritism, which was really, really interesting. And obviously, right, he finishes the chapter with an explanation of a famous teacher, which, you know, in this case was... Ellen Kardec and the uh, the book that we know. So amazing, amazing chapter that talks to us about some of the things that you know we can really understand uh, uh, and really use for us to really make sense of this new thing called spiritism. I do see a question: Is William Crookes known outside of spiritism and spiritualism? I think there's a typo here. Absolutely, right, Sir William Crookes. The the title Sir. Right is really a, a title given to the most prestigious uh, British citizens. He was a chemist, a physicist. He's very well known in the sciences. Uh, again, really, really well known. He got royal medals and several accolades for his uh, his uh, inventions. Right, as I mentioned before. So very well known. Uh, way more known, I would say, in uh, outside of spiritism than in spiritism, right, for, for example. So if you look at, for example, the work that he's done on the cat, cathode rays or the way, you know, the, the, the light travels in straight lines or thanks to him, his work, we now, you know, developed fluorescent lights, for example, right? Radiant matter, the work that later on was produced on radi radiant matter, it's because of his original studies of radiation. So yes, the, uh, he's, he's got so many accolades that, you know, will take us, you know, maybe the last of our, of our time here to talk about Sir William Crookes. So if you're interested on, please, right, uh, study some of the life and the, bio the biography of Sir William Crookes, which is an amazing one, nevertheless. Continuing, folks. Otherwise, uh, you know, our time is going to, you know, go over here. If you look at, for example, some of the devices that he gives to mediums are really, really poignant. And I say poignant because nowadays the mediums are all over the place, right? You go to Netflix, there's few shows on mediumship. There are few shows on mediums. If you go to movies, if you go to Hollywood, if you go to pretty much anywhere, the, 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 you know, literature and everywhere we go, right? We'll see, you know, the concept of mediumship for people talking to, right? Uh, those folks that have already passed. And then the lines advice to mediums were very poignant because at the time, as I mentioned before, at the time, folks were trying to talk to mediums, right? Hey, let me find a medium here. Let's do this and let's go this. And 
He was popular. Even in the White House, they had some mediumship meetings. But his advice to mediums were very, very interesting because the very first one that he says is guess, right? Study. You cannot be a medium if you don't go to a rigorous study of the medium's book. Why does he say that? If you remember, I talked to you guys in the beginning, Ellen Kardec created or crafted the word mediumship. This word did not exist before Kardec was with us. So he crafted the word for the very first time, mediumship. So he publishes this amazing companion or compendium of mediumship studies. Look at what Delan mentioned about Kardec. He patiently devoted himself to this work, which contains the most complete data we have about the beyond world, how we communicate, what are some of the steps we need to take, what are some of the precautions we have to take. For 35 years, this is Delan saying, for 35 years, Delan has seen all those teachings, all Kardec's teachings being verified daily, daily, my friends. And it is possible to judge their value for not having been contradicted. Everything that Kardec wrote on the Medium's book, Delan was right working the, working with it, using it as a guideline, as a method to really you know um, go over or to produce medium sheet meetings, so to speak. Obviously, there are a few more advice to mediums as he brings to us, right? Some of them are retreat, self-communion, let's take care of ourselves, of our lives, how we conduct our lives, the homogeneity geneity of thoughts, meaning the whole medium should group together, not one individual person as a medium because, right, it's a lot easier to follow if you're by yourself. Whereas if you have a, a mediumship group, it's a lot more difficult, right, for that group to fall or to go in, in, you know, sideways. Regularity or uniformity is really important of that group, not for the mediumship practice, as he mentioned. Patience, obviously. I mean, the, the famous Brazilian medium, Francis Xavier, would always say, right, uh, when I make a call, I can, I can ring, but the call is made from there to here. And a lot of people, they give up, for example, medium should be, oh, I really want to talk to my mom who passed away 20 years ago. I haven't heard anything about it. I want to talk to so-and-so, to Joe, to Mary, to Larry and Paul. And yes, but we have to have patience. We don't know, right, what's going to happen, right? We don't know who's going to communicate. We don't control that. The spirits do. We don't. He even talks about the important, or the importance rather, of the identity of spirits. And this is an interesting one. Because if you look at, you know, his call to action is distrust big names. Oh, I'm Socrates communicating here. Oh, I'm Sir William Crooks communicating there. Oh, I'm so and so communicating here. Oh, I'm Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I'm Victor Hugo. Right? Okay, but what's the purpose of the spirit telling that big name? Because if we look, if we understand that, you know, evolved spirits, they don't care about their names, about their fame, about their recognition. No. What they care is that the message is being spread so humanity can get better. That's what they care. And then when we start seeing a lot of the messages of these famous names, we should be very, very careful. That's his uh, call to action, right, for us. Because the really evolved spirits, they only care about making humanity a better place for all of us and not for them themselves. So here are some of the advice that he brings to mediums. And then obviously, when he's coming to a close on the book, he gives us some more knowledge about what spiritism really is, not only the phenomenon, as we talked. And then this is one that I found very interesting I want to share with you folks is it's a it's a it's a it's an ask, so to speak, right? May he writes, I, I quote, may these facts implant in our consciousness the conviction of immortality, no longer based only on faith or reasoning, because they're there. He acknowledges that they're there, but solidly based on science and its severe and positive method. Because there's a method. There's a rigorous method that they used 
to really produce these communications, to really get them right in a way that they make sense for all of us, for all of us, correct? So that's what he starts and talks about it when, you know, uh, again, call to action for all of us on spiritism overall. But if I look, for example, and I ask the question, what is spiritism? Is it a religion? Is it a science? Is it a philosophy? Or boy, can it be all three? Obviously, Delon, with his scientific background, he was one that was telling us, right? Hey, the way I see spiritism is like a science, right? Or rather, a progressive science because it's always progressing. Let me make a let me make a parenthesis here, folks. Yes, spiritism started with Ellen Carter in 1857, April the 18th. But he has not ended with Carter. Leon Denis came afterwards. The Lamb came afterwards. Other authors came afterwards. Still today, there's some publications being written on spiritism and all that. Some of them, they're telling the same things as we learned from Kardec. Some of them are telling the same things in different perspectives, different paradigms, right? But again, when we look at that, it's, it's a progressive science that is based on the revelation of the spirits on the meticulous analysis of facts. They analyze, meticulously speaking, all these facts. Who is communicating? What's the essence of the communication? What are we trying to say and see here? We have no dogmas and no doctrines whose discussion is prohibited. That's why I invite you all, if you're not satisfied with these topics, don't believe Flavio, go out there, do the research, think critically by yourselves. Is spiritism good for me? Do I have a better life thanks to spiritism? Does spiritism give me the tools that I need to conduct my life in a better way, in a more progressive way, in a more effective way, in a more helping way towards others. And then, obviously, in addition to the communication between the living and the dead and the principle of reincarnation, which we subscribe, obviously, right? Without reincarnation, there wouldn't be you know, uh, uh, divine justice. We are absolutely committed, and we admit our rational theories they refer to the origin and future of the soul. They're there. They have a purpose, as we understand, right? So that's those are some of the things that uh, 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 Gabriel Delon uh, talks to us about what spiritism really is. And now there's a question. Yeah, I'm going to read so everybody can uh, can follow that. Where to find most recent verified messages from the highest evolved spirits? What are they nowadays most concerned about? What are they emphasize in their most recent messages? Thank Lucas, right? Is the one asking question. I think, Lucas, spirits are communicating all the time. Not only through spiritist centers, they're communicating different parts of the world. They're bringing us new ideas or ideas that corroborate some of the old concepts that we had, right? But one thing I'll tell you that's, you know, as we learn through spiritism, the evolved spirits are always concerned about the betterment of all of us as a society. And those messages that keep coming through books, through publications, through you know materials of any time, those messages are coming to us. They can really serve as a motivation for us to do better today than we did yesterday. For us to be better spirits, incarnate spirits today than we were yesterday. And if those messages are bringing us to the future, to the positive, to the next steps, those are indeed messages from evolved spirits. But as the Lund mentioned, we got to be careful because sometimes some of these messages, oh, come and follow my religion or my idea or my evolved spirits, they don't care about themselves, the individual themselves. They care about the betterment of society, of humanity as a whole. That's why we should be careful. That's one of the advices that the Lund uh, does uh, to all of us, right? So before I, uh, I wrap here, folks, one thing that I'll say as well is the law is very, very meticulous in writing this book in a way that he brings the idea of a spiritist phenomenon, not only about this, oh, this mystery, oh, it's mystic, or it, it, no, it's, we see that all the time, every day, all the time, right? 
This spiritual phenomenon is with us, and all of us have access to it. Sometimes we don't understand, sometimes we don't acknowledge that, but let me give you an example. If you're going through a problem, if you're going through a difficulty, if you don't know what you, which decision to make, once you pray, once you stop, right, all the noise outside, once you retreat yourself, once you enter into self-communion, and by the way, Jesus himself did that too, when he went to the mount to pray sometimes. When we enter that situation and we avidly pray to our creator, to Jesus, whatever it is that we pray for, when we do that, we're asking for help. When we do that, we're letting, I mean, hey, I need some help. I cannot really go through this. I need the way to see the end of the tunnel or an exit for all these difficulties. Once we throw our asks, our requests out there, oftentimes we receive the response in the form of intuition. But we're so busy with our daily lives that we think sometimes that intuition is our thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I came across this. Great. Yeah, let's, let me do it. Oftentimes that idea or revolutionary idea that we have is really the intuition of our good spirits acting, right, in our lives. That's why when we talk about the logical paradigm of spiritism, right, it's really based on facts. Based on facts that are according to reasoning in a rigorous logic gives spiritism a characteristic of a positivism, a way that tomorrow will be better than today. And that positivism suits our times, no matter where we are. That's what Alan Kardec mentioned in the book called The Spiritist Journey, right, from 1862. That's why I like to call spiritism as this progressive body of knowledge or toolkit that all of us have in front of us that can help us really face all the adversities, all the challenges, all the opportunities as well that are thrown in front of us. And thanks to this, we can be better tomorrow. Thanks to this, we can be better spirits tomorrow. Thanks to this, we can see an opportunity every time we see a loved one, or every time we see someone, for that matter, needing help. Every time we see someone asking for help, it gives us the motivation, you know what? Let me extend my hand and let me help that brother out. Let me help that sister out. Let me help that person out to be better, him or herself as well. And the more I do this, the more I embark on this journey, not the journey that Kardec did for this book, but on my own personal journey, the better I leave that journey. The more connected I am with the phenomenon itself, but most importantly, with my spirit guide, all of our, all, all of us spirit guide, which is Jesus, which has given us all the uh, teachings of how to live a very more upstanding life. Folks, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, again, there's so much more that we can cover for the book itself. I highly recommend and suggest all of you, all of us, read that book again. If you have read it before, read it if you haven't read it, because there's so much information there that well, was not only important back in the days when it was published, right, 130 years ago, but it's still very relevant to our day that we live. So thank you so much. And we'll get back to you uh, for the end. Thank you so much, Flavio. It's been a thought-provoking talk, brilliant, full of, packed with information, things that will take a while for us to digest and also an invitation for us to go to the Land's books and read them thoroughly. Uh, I just want to point out two things that Delan mentions in his preface, preface of this book. The first one is that he says the experimental demonstration of the existence of soul and its immortality. This is the scientific aspect of, this, of the um, spiritist doctrine, of spiritism. And you mentioned something very important. Kardec is not the end point. His work is the starting point. Basically, throughout history, you have elements that when you get together, we can then compile a work, and also the teachings came from spirits, not from, from us, but we could use examples through the development of humanity as a whole and mediumship and other aspects of us. We, we can see that you know the theory presented by the spirits with their examples compiled by Alan Kardec in his wonderful work, they are the basis for us to understand pasts and also develop our future. And that's what Leon Denis and here, most specifically, Gabriel Delan did. He's brilliant when he says, I also want to 
to read this, this part. Instead of presenting to the incredulous the whole doctrine formulated by the spirits and codified by Alan Kardec, the work of Alan Kardec, we simply gave them the opportunity of reading the works of masters. And then he mentions, you know, uh, William, Sir William Crookes, Wallace, Oxen, Aksakoff, and so many others, you know, that you mentioned. And he said, I have a list at the end of the book that you could, you know, I will refer to and you could go and read. So Kardec didn't do the scientific work or didn't take it, you know, stretch it to, to uh, you know, everything that was available at the time. And the learn was wise enough to say, well, I'm going to do a sort of literature review. I'm going to mention the experiments that prove what Kardec presented as the work of the spirits and in a form of compiled work. So the, 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 their, uh, these scientists were there, their experiments were there. So what he did was just a, a literature review. And nowadays we have, in terms of statistics, we have meta-analysis where we get, we collect all these experiments and their results, and then we try to extract something meaningful for, from them. Of course, at, at those days, um, Delan didn't have these tools, but what he did was something like that. Well, I don't need to repeat the experiments because Sir William Crookes, he did a brilliant work in, in, uh, in um, experimental spiritism, you know. So it's, it's fantastic. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, book. And as you said, as you mentioned, you know, he's very uh, meticulous, um, Gabriel Delan. And he uses very often in his books his, his scientific background, you know, the, the, the way he organizes it. And so it's, it's been very, very, very nice to, you know, to, uh, to watch your presentation was, was really Thank delightful. You. Thank you so much. So let me see. I don't think we have any more questions. Um, let me just go to the announcement. Uh, first, a quick reminder to everyone today, the 2nd of April, is the birthday of Chico Xavier, Francisco Candido Xavier, this wonderful human being, and of course, this wonderful medium who brought so many information from the spiritual world through his work, through his dedication to, uh, to bringing enlightenment to humanity. So the 2nd of April is his uh, birthday. So we send a good thought and, and our love to him in, in a, as a sign of gratitude for you know all that he has, has done to us. And um, now the announcement, we have uh, this month, April, is the 15th anniversary of uh, the Spiritist Center for Peace, the one that is bringing this series of talks about the land and his works to all of you. So um, wish all the best and many years for uh, peace. And uh, may we have the opportunity also to organize events like these ones more often. And we also have a study group. Peace organizes this online study um, on Wednesdays, 12 noon UK time. And it's about the book we are studying heaven and hell, and also the gospel according to spiritism. So everyone is welcome to join. So we use Zoom, and you have here the um, uh, the link to go to the room and also the the password. But if you need more information, you can always write to to us. And finally, least but not last. Next month, we will have here with us, the 6th of May, um, Faye Waddington, and she'll be talking about researches about mediumship. Another title from Gabrielle Delan. So that's what we had for today. I want to thank all of those who have been with us here, sharing this wonderful talk. And of course, I hope to see you all uh, next week. Next month, sorry, we are used to weekly um, events, but this one is a monthly one. So, once again, Flavio, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you to you all. See you next month, the 6th of May. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers.